What's going on, Rangers? Coach here, and I want to tell you about another thing that's going to be added to our games real soon. They're called face-offs. They take place at the start of every period, and it's what happens after the ref blows the whistle. And not to frighten you, but face-offs are basically the most complicated version of rock, paper, scissors you're ever going to play. I mean, studies upon studies upon studies have tried to break down the best way to win a face-off, and some have even gone so far as to say that winning a face-off isn't even important at all. <laughs> but they don't know hockey. Trust me. Since you're all new to it, we're going to keep things real simple. Basically, there's only two ways you're going to try and win a face-off. Let's take a look. So Basically, as you approach the face-off, your lineup's gonna look something like this. You got left defense, right defense, you got a left winger, a right winger, and center in the middle ready to take the face off, right? Now when you go to square off against somebody else, you're gonna have to put your sticks down to either side of that center dot. You'll get to choose which side you wanna put your stick, but basically there's only two options. You put it to the left, and you try and win it like this. Back to your defense. Now this part is crucial, because especially at your age, you're gonna wanna try and win the puck back as much as possible. It puts the puck farthest away from your opponents and it gives your team a chance to regroup and figure out what to do next. Now let's take a look at how our center was holding his stick when he won that face off. There's some key factors here, all right? First, you get the legs wide. Winning face offs actually takes a lot of lower body strength. So you wanna have a nice wide stance so you can't be pushed around or bumped off the puck easy. Another thing you may notice is where his hands are placed. The bottom hand slides way far down on the stick. I'm talking like right up by the blade. Again, you're gonna need as much strength as possible to try and win a face off. Then as the ref drops the puck, you wanna spin your body to try and block your opponent and dish it back to one of your defensemen. Don't try to put it to one of your wingers. Your opponents also have a winger standing right beside them. So all you're really doing is creating another battle for the puck. We want the puck first, so try and dish that puck back. Now that's just one way to do it. There's another. This time our center is gonna approach and go to the backhand. See what happened there? On the backhand, dished it back to the opposite defenseman. Now if we look at the stance this time, we see at least one difference. Look at the way he's holding his stick. The hand is still down on the bottom, but instead of holding it like this, he's holding it like this. That's what's gonna give him that backwards digging motion. We still want the legs nice and wide and the body down nice and low. Because again, things are a lot harder to push over when you're low to the ice. Now in this clip, it's a clean draw right back. The center doesn't spin to try and block off the other center, but that's also an option and I highly recommend it at your age. And that's about it for face-offs. Wait, wait, wait. What do we all do if we lose the face-off? Always such good questions from that guy, huh? Wanna know what to do when we lose a face-off? Check it out. Now we're lined up as usual, only this time we're gonna lose the draw. It's going to go back to their defenseman. Now notice what everybody did immediately. The first thing everybody did was pair off to whoever's next to them and try and cover them. We got coverage here, here, and here. But as they start to move the puck down the ice, we can see a shift in the coverage. The two wingers stay close to our opponent's wingers, but our center starts to come over and attack the puck carrier. Why? Because look, because now that defenseman's covering the forward trying to break across the blue line. At this point, we've got coverage on the puck carrier, we've got coverage on all three people trying to rush down the ice, and our right defenseman is able to come across and cover both a puck carrier and a passing option, giving us double coverage. So I know that might sound like a lot, but trust me, when you get out there, it's really simple. We want to win the face-offs back to our own defense. If we win, we want our wingers and our centers to kind of get open for passes so we can immediately start moving the puck down the ice. If we lose the face-off, make sure to cover whoever's standing closest to you. Just like our old methods of the four-person coverage, it's no different with five. Whoever's closest to the puck carrier should be trying to get in their face, active sticks, trying to knock it loose, trying to make them worried. I hope that makes things a little bit more clear for you. I'm extremely excited for you to get the chance to play real five on five hockey. It takes a lot of skill, but it also takes a lot of brains. And the more prepared you are, the better you're gonna do. So keep practicing and I'll see you at the rink.